So on page six in your pink packet, um, all I'm basically focusing on today is just writing some sine and cosine graphs, drawing them. And they're actually very real world. Um, this is the temperatures of Baltimore versus Ash Baltimore, Maryland versus Asheville, North Carolina. Do you agree Baltimore gets a little hotter typically each year than Asheville? And it also gets a little colder each year. And it's cyclical, right? Like typically our winters are colder and our summers are hotter. And it's cyclical. So we could demonstrate temperatures and lots of other things using sine and cosine graphs. What I want to, excuse you, excuse me, <laughs> is hit home with you, is what a periodic graph is. A periodic graph is something that repeats itself. Would you say that this graph is periodic? Yeah, it repeats itself, right? So we're going to say yes. Oh, wait. We're going to say the function is periodic. What's the period? How long until it repeats itself? Yeah, it is four. He's saying, okay, so then every four, it's going to repeat itself. And I agree with that, Ritzy. Perf. Would you say this little thing is periodic? No. It's funky. It's a step graph. It's not. It's not periodic, which is a little funky because is it repeating itself? This y value was half. This y value is one, one and a half. It's not doing the same thing. Even though there's a pattern to it, it is not periodic. So we don't have to worry about a period. We're going to be little artists today, okay? So I want us to think to our unit circle real fast. Not with your calculator yet, Koopy. Sine is which, sine is which coordinate? Sine Blake. Oh my gosh. Sine is the y coordinate. This x is just referring to its angle. So the y coordinate at zero radians, zero. zero radians is over here. If this is my unit circle, zero radians is over here. What's that coordinate over here? What comma what? One comma zero. Yeah, isn't the coordinate over here one comma zero? And therefore the y value is zero. zero. So I want everybody to put a zero right there. Hmm. Pi over two is up here, y'all. What's the y coordinate up here? One. one. Hi, dog. You guys, what if we go all the way to pi? So this was pi over two up here. Here's pi. What's the y coordinate over here? Zero. Zero. How about a three pi over one. three pi over two? That point is negative zero, negative one. So that's got a y value. Okay. Okay, you guys, we're going in a circle though. Ready? So that was pi over two, one half, two halves, three halves. This is going back to two pi now. What's my y coordinate at two pi? Still zero. Still zero. Now, 5 pi over 2, you guys, is not on my unit circle, but bear with me. See if you're down with counting like this. Could I say, I'm going to keep counting by pi over 2, meaning, check this out, 1 half, 2 halves pi, 3 halves pi, 4 halves pi, 5 halves pi. Wouldn't that be 5 halves if I just keep going around? What's my y coordinate there? 1. one. That's the point zero, 0,1. Then this is 3 pi. What if I went 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi? What's my y coordinate there? 0. zero. Now we're going to change some gears. Where's negative pi over 2? If here's 0, can I go down that pi over 2 distance? Negative just means go down. What's the y value there? Negative 1. What if I went negative pi? If here's positive pi, isn't negative pi getting me to the same spot? Cool. What's that going to get me for my y coordinate? I. Negative 3 pi over 2. Positive 3 pi over 2 is boom, boom, boom. So negative 3 pi over 2 is 1, 2, 3 pi over 2. Y coordinate? Negative 2 pi. If a full circle around is 2 pi, isn't the same? I'm going to get to the same spot going the other direction. That y value is 0. Negative 5 pi over 2. Count it out. Negative 1 pi over 2, negative 2 pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2, negative 4 pi over 2, negative 5 pi over 2, that y coordinate? Negative 1. So here's what I'm going to have us do first. Let's plot these points. This is the point 0, 0. I'm going to go like this in pink. Boom, 0, 0. Pi over 2, 1. Pi, 0. 3 pi over 2, negative 1. This is a very mountainous looking, very sharp looking graph that where I plotted these points. But I'm going to show you, when we plot this on our calculator, it should not look pointy. Let me show you something. So when I do the sine of x, and I graph this, and I make sure that I am in radians now, look at how curvy this graph is. 
You agree there's nothing spiky about a sine graph at all, people. So when you go and trace these dots, you guys, you cannot be spiky, Cooper. You cannot be spiky. You got to go curvy and curvy and curvy. And we are going to get frustrated in this process, you guys, but it's not spiky. I get that the points, if you did connect the dot, would be spiky, but the graph is not. Check this out. You guys, the function sign, what do you think the period of a sine graph is? How long until it repeats pi. itself? Mm, pi, it's not repeating itself. Oh, yeah, isn't it going to be 2 pi? Doesn't it make sense? It takes a whole way around a circle to get the entire sine graph. The domain. Domain is for what x's this graph is around. Yeah, it goes left to right, negative infinity to infinity. So we could write it like that, or you could say all real numbers, whichever you prefer. The range is just saying between what two y values is this bounded between? Negative one and one. And this is just a fancy way to say that. Another way you could say that is negative one to one. Um, does it make sense that these y values went as low as negative one and as high as one? Yeah. The y-intercept, where does the sine graph start? Yeah, it starts right at that origin. Boop. The x-intercept. Pi. Every pi? Multiple. One pi, two pi, three pi, right? Yeah. So could we say every pi n when n is an integer? Because wouldn't that be one pi? And integers are just negative and positive whole numbers. Sound good? Um, check this out. This was a graph, Blake, that I put on there just to remind us how curvy these are, okay? And um, what if I ask for the sine of 9 pi over 2? Could we do that from this pattern? Here's a half a pi. Here's 2 halves pi, 3 halves pi, 4 halves pi, 5 halves pi, 6 halves pi, 7 halves pi, 8 halves pi, 9 halves pi. What would be the y value there? One. Well done. Boom. So let's see if Blake can have less mountainous regions and more flowing waves. You guys, now I want us to talk about the X coordinates. The X coordinates, and I'm gonna draw myself a little unicircle-y type thing over here. We got this point, we got this point, we got this point. You don't have to put this over uh, on your page. This is just me sleuthing with you. This is zero radians, pi over two, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. Okay, peeps, the x coordinate at 0 radians. What do we think? x coordinate 0 radians, 1. x coordinate at pi over 2 radians, 0. x coordinate at pi radians, hmm. x coordinate at 3 pi over 2, good. 2 pi, x coordinate, 1. 5 pi over 2, Zero. 1 half, 2 halves, 3 halves, 4 halves, 5 halves, that x coordinate, very good, Coop, is 0. 3 pi, 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, x coordinate, negative 1. Let's go in the opposite direction. The x coordinate at negative pi over 2, 0. Thank you, Mr. Mateo. Mm -hmm. Keep hitting the page. Uh, x coordinate at negative pi. X coordinate at negative 3 pi over 2. Zero. 2, 3. Yep, and you're seeing I put this as a pattern on purpose. X coordinate at negative 2 pi. Yep. X coordinate at negative 5 halves. Negative 1 half, negative 2 halves, negative 3 halves, negative 4 halves, negative 5 halves. X coordinate. Okay, we got to go plot these points. This graph is going to look real similar to the sine one. I even drew you a pretty nice curvy one here. If I plot my points, this function starts at 0, 1. Then we have pi over 2, 0. Pi, negative 1. 3 pi over 2, 0. We're plotting all those points, and then I'm just going to continue the pattern. I feel like Blake's giggle makes me nervous that it's maybe going to be even spikier. When I look at my calculator, and if I were to change that sine to a cosine... What's this one supposed to look like? Still nice and curvy. 
Oh, golly. He's using these eraser, though, so that shows effort. I appreciate that. When I go nice and curvy, you guys. Uh-oh, when Beck's laughing at it, it's not going to be good. Nice and curvy. All I can ask is effort. We don't want it to be spiky. Okay, let's talk about what the period of cosine is going to be. How long until cosine repeats itself? Two pi. Uh, is it two pi still? Yes. Yeah, it is still two pi. With me, Tatum? The domain? All real still. This one is just like the last one so far. The range? How low and how high? Yeah. You're like, wow, nothing has changed. Or negative one to one on the Y. Nothing has changed. All those facts are the same. Here's where it changes. What's the Y intercept here? The Y intercept here is one. What was it? So this is the cosine graph. Let me go show you that sine graph just to show you. Boop, boop. It's the same thing, just shifted over, right? So just be careful. We need to get tattooed in our brain. Cosine starts at that one. Sine always starts at the origin. We'll get that tattooed. X-intercepts? N pi over 2. Ooh. Let's think about this. It's close. But if I said N pi over 2, I'm going to write it over here. N pi over 2. I agree it'd be 1 pi over 2. What if N was 2? 2 pi over 2 would get me a 1. So you're saying, it would just, the would cancel, it would just be pi. you're saying every pi, right? Every pi, we're going to be having X intercept. And all you've got to add to that, bud, is where do you start? Mm -hmm. Give me a starting point. Which one do you want to start at? What, like negative we could, or I, I would just go like a basic. Yeah. He's saying if I were to start here, pi over two, then now if I started there, Ritzman, now I've got that starting spot. Now can I say plus a pi n, plus a pi n, meaning plus one pi, or plus two pies, or plus three pies. So the difference on this one, bud, we just need to give ourselves a starting point, then you had it. Um, cosine at negative pi over two, you guys, that's asking for what's the x coordinate at negative pi over two? Down here, that x coordinate is just zero. You could also just look on our graph and a negative pi over two on a cosine graph, the value of the function is zero. Two. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, you guys, similarities between sine and cosine versus differences. What do we know about the period of both of them? How long for it to repeat itself? Two pi, a whole revolution around the unit circle. Both have a domain of? All real numbers, agreed. And a range of? Yeah negative one to one, what's the biggest difference that I want us to take away? Yes, yeah, sine we're gonna say starts at zero, zero, or the origin, very good. And cosine, y is one, well done. We don't need to do this, I'm not worried about this. Here's what I want you to giggle for me. What, why do I love this? It's a stop sign. You get it? You guys, where did it start? The origin. What's the period? Two pi. How cute. How cute. That's funny. Your homework is just page 10. Look what I did on this graph. Blake, you're going to want to pay attention. This graph, you guys, look, I showed you where one is and I showed you where negative one is. So your graphs have to go all the way up to one and all the way down to negative one because I already labeled those axes. You know what I'm saying? If you make it spiky, you're not welcome back. I said the one was like this tile. Yeah, all the way at the top and the negative one was all the way to the bottom. Two, homework is just page 10 and we've got six minutes. So let's just knock out page 10. I just want you to practice these graphs and then answer a few questions.